Another big difference from business markets and consumer markets is why you buy. Um, again, for personal consumption, I'm buying it for personal use. Um, for business, I am buying it for a specific business purchase. And in business, you never spend money unless you have a specific outcome that that money is intended to create and have a way of measuring your results. So I am, uh, when I'm, as a consumer, I look for the lowest price, but I may not know what the lowest price is. And we talked about shopping. For some people, shopping is part of the benefit. Uh, other people, shopping is part of the cost. Business is much more likely to quantify some of the non-price factors, the ordering cost. I had that, I was at, um, I don't want to mention the retail establishment, but it was on this campus and they sell books. Um, and I was in there trying to buy this, a, a little pointer because I'd lost mine, um, and I was going to charge it to the department because I didn't want to pay for this out of my own pocket. Um, and we have a special account there that you can buy stuff for the department. So I went in there and I asked. And then the person that I talked to didn't know, got a manager. The manager understood how to do the purchase and went to find, the, they got the, the little special records that they keep. And it took about 15 minutes. Um, so they're paying me, they're paying the clerk, and they're paying the manager 15 minutes worth of time. How much is that? 20 bucks maybe, 30 bucks. So, and it's a $50 purchase with 20% off. So a business buyer would recognize that the, you know, having, you know, in, in the, this is why. But those wouldn't be like uh, common uh, cases like that. So it's a common day-to-day -day task for the job. You'd have to go for the system because people will cheat if you don't. Um, and this is where common sense comes in sometimes. And, this is my favorite example is at the grocery store. Have you ever been at the grocery store and you disputed the price? And at a bad grocery store, what do they do? Price check on aisle three. <laughs> you know, what's the price on hemorrhoid treatment? <laughs> um, and again, so you've got the clerk standing still. You've got a, 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 a stock person uh, going out and finding it. You, the customer, are standing there frustrated and you're talking about 35 cents. Um, what happens at a good grocery store? They say, oh, I'm sorry. Well, here it is. <laughs> um, and I've had that where I've disputed the price and uh, found out later that I was wrong. They were right. Um, what did that do for customer loyalty? Yeah, so, so I mean, the idea is for 30, just thinking about that, for 30 cents, I'm going to annoy a customer and I'm going to pay two staff people to find out whether or not my customer is lying or I could just take that risk and might lose 30 cents. Remember we talked about lifetime value of a customer. I'll lose money on a transaction as long as I can maintain that relationship over time. So again, ordering cost. Handling charges. Um, what does it cost to ship? What does it cost to package it? Um, what does it cost to unpackage it? What does it cost to get it from the re, uh, receiving dock to the assembly line? What does it take to get from the receiving dock to putting it on the shelf? Um, that costs money, you have to do that. Inventory costs, uh, transportation, return. Uh, quality is a big one. Is This is the whole ISO 9000 idea that when you have a defective product, especially when you have a defective component, the cost of a defective component is not just the cost of that component, but that's the cost of using that component, having the product that that component is a part of fail, and then having to replace the entire product including the component. So the cost of a, a, a bad product is much higher in the business market than it is in the consumer market. Another difference between business customers and individual customers is the concept of a buying center. Um, when I am making a purchase, who is the person who decides? Me. Who is the person who evaluates the alternatives? Me. Who is the person who initiates the process? Me. Um, in a business, there may be many people that play a role in making a purchase. And generally, the, the larger the purchase, and we'll talk about different kinds of purchases, the more involvement there is. But common roles in, in business are initiator, user, influencer, decider, and gatekeeper. 
Uh, let me give you an example. When I was hired at this university, um, they give you a computer, free computer. Um, well, it's not free, they own it, you get to use it. Um, but when I was working at graduate school, I needed a computer because I was writing my dissertation. So I went out to the computer store and I bought a computer and I came back and started working on my dissertation. When I came here, they said, you get a computer. And then so somebody said, we've just hired a new faculty. That person is entitled to a computer that initiates it. Um, I'm the person who is going to use the computer. Um, so I want to have a say in the decision. And then I will go in and they will have three or four recommended, or actually no longer three or four recommended, now they just give you one or two. Uh, you can have a laptop or a desktop. Um, and so somebody had to decide what those options were going to be. And then the gatekeeper is who was it that made it that I'm not talking directly to the computer sales representative, I'm only talking to our people. Somebody had to screen out all of those people who wanted to sell computers to that person. So three weeks later, I had my computer. Um, but again, individual purchase, you, you want it, you buy it. If you can pay for it, good. Business purchase, there may be a lot of people involved. And it's not always the same people that are involved in the purchase. I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but think about this from a hiring perspective. Is a hire is a, hire a business purchase? Yeah, let's talk about that. 